Doing good, thanks. How are you guys doing? Good. Good. Can you just start by talking about the game that uh, Anger had yesterday when field position was such a, a big part of how Mike and Kellen wanted to call the game? Yeah, I think looking back on it, it was, I think, a little bit of an underrated part of the game. I think in the game, I didn't even realize maybe the impact that it was having because he had four punts, all were fair caught, and all were into the 10. And I don't think I really realized that during the game. But um, with the wind as a factor, too, to be able to match the distance and the hang time and the accuracy to make those guys catch the ball into the 10 was, was pretty good, man. It's pretty good because it was windy. And it was a factor going into it one way and with the wind at the back one way. So he had to really determine how hard to hit it to keep it in play where it wasn't a touchback, but it also wasn't fair caught on the 20 or something like that. Was, was wind a factor on extra points? Yes. On, yeah, going that direction was a, a big factor. That's why we wanted the wind at our back in the fourth going the other way. But the two, the first PAT definitely, it was blowing left. And you can see it, it went kind of middle, and then it just took a hard left. And then I think the second one, he probably overcompensated and said, you know, he's mad. He's like, hell with it. I'm going to try to just drive it right through the goalpost and hit it hard. And it just took off on him the other way. So probably overcompensated. But going that direction, the win was a factor. You know, catching kickoffs and also kicking field goals. We knew that before the game. Going the other way was, was nice because the win was kind of at the back. So it was a little bit cleaner ball. You want to put Pollard back on returns or because of what he's dealing with, you want to say, forget about that, let's call you. Yeah, I think when he feels like he's confident to be able to do it, he'll for sure go back there again. And whether it's this week or next week, um, love to get him back there again. But I also really respect, you know, Corey Clements' work back there. I know he put one on the ground in Washington, but that was also a win factor catch because the balls were getting knocked down going that way too. So, um, Corey's done a great job, and you know when TP comes back, that'll be his spot. But we won't do that until he's confident. And of course, hopefully, that's what you know. Coach feels the same way. You, I, forgive me, I forget the exact nature of what y'all were being recognized for before the game. But you had a moment with your family and honoring your father's legacy. What did that mean? And to be back in, with the Giants and kind of thinking of your dad. Yeah, it was um, very special, very emotional because I spent. Um, a lot of years there as our family. You know, he was there two years as an assistant, seven years as a head coach. So nine years in the Meadowlands, not that stadium, but the one next door um, was really special. Brought back a lot of really cool memories. A couple not cool ones, but the, the real cool ones way out, way the not cool ones. Um, and then to present that check to um, the family of a Navy SEAL who was killed a couple weeks in action through my dad's foundation, that me and my siblings and a couple other people are a part of was really cool and um, really tipped my hat to the Giants because this kind of happened on short notice because the, the man just passed away a couple weeks ago. So we put something together and made a donation to the foundation in honor of uh, Brian Bourgeois and his family. So um, it's really cool to do that. My sister was there. She drove up with her family and um, to see them was great. And to do it on that stadium where um, the Meadowlands where we had a lot of cool things happen. It was really neat. Thanks for asking that question. It was emotional. And before the game, you're like, you don't want to go there. But, but we did. Matt Daniels will be unavailable for the coming days. How does that, how do you respond to that challenge? Yeah. Um, I can't really when we've been hit with over the last couple of weeks or months. <laughs> the game plan's always changing. So Matt's done a great job. I mean, first of all, I think hopefully he'll be a post team coordinator here in the near future. He does a great job for us. Um, and I think, I haven't told him yet, but you know, I'll lean on CJ Goodwin a little bit because Matt's really, um, really good with the gunners, the corners on punt return, some of the guys on kickoff. So some of the um, small group focus that he has with our special teams group, you know, I'll lean on CJ and a couple of guys um, that are veteran special teamers to kind of pick up the slack and um, make sure they help me out of practice and in the meeting room. Maybe even give them a chance to run a little bit of the meeting with those specialty guys. Um, but we're still talking about that, but I have confidence that we'll, we'll get it done, um, especially playing against a team we just played you know, eight days ago that don't play till tomorrow night. So there's not a lot of new film to watch on them. You seem like the type of person that likes to, you're, you're energetic, you want to coach guys in person and that. How do you 
uh, kind of apply your coaching methods to having to do the virtual? It doesn't seem like something that you would love to do, but how, how do you kind of go about trying to translate over to virtual? Yeah, it's a good one. I do not love to do virtual. <laughs> Even this thing, when you guys were not here for two weeks, I was like, man, let's talking to this thing. Um, the, the human element to me is everything especially with coaching to players. And even in the special teams world, I can't say more than O and D, but a lot of our meetings are on the field, walking and talking. There's not a lot of sit down and look at playbooks and study plays and memorize this. And um, a lot of it's walking and talking and ideas. And hey, if they do this, what do you think here? So it's very interactive. And to lose that part of it, for us in the virtual world, it just it's, it's a big difference. Um, so when we've done the virtual stuff, we try to make it um, probably 50-50 educational and entertaining just to keep them alive wherever they're sitting at home um, and try to make it as you know, back and forth as we can. But there's nothing like just being in the room and on the Ford Center turf with them for a meeting. So um, hopefully we get them back and this virtual can end soon. You're always having a lot of conversations with Mike during the game. What were some of the conversations just before halftime on when to call a timeout? And on that same note, when Dalton's catching the ball and running out of bounds, how much does it help to have players who are that aware of the clock? Yeah, a ton. That was a great play by Schultz. Just to have the awareness that not only to get, a, get out of bounds, but get out of bounds going forward. Because if they would have ruled forward progress in bounds, they would have kept the clock winding. Um, and we talk about that you know, every Friday. We have a, you know, a team meeting that goes around the league talking about different situations and the nuances of really you know, under two minutes and a half into game. Um, and most of the time when I'm talking with coach, it's about um, what's the distance we need to get to for field goals, um, you know, and anything else that could happen. If we need to clock it, if we need to be in, we call it thunder, if it's third down to fourth down, running clock, uh, how many timeouts we have left. There's just tons of stuff that um, I have to be in tune with because it's part of the special teams world um, that hopefully I can help coach if he needs it. You know, I definitely um, don't get on the headset if, if it's all – fine and dandy, but um, I'm always there just because I'm always paying attention to it anyways. You want DeMarcus to start wearing boxing gloves in practice now? Yeah, huh? <laughs> I was watching that this morning because I didn't, I didn't get the TV copy until a little bit ago. And when I got two replays of it just punching it out, I was in my seat going, yeah, man, we got one. So when we show the tape on Thursday, it's, you know, around the league stuff. But we want to be on the around the league tape, you know, that we show in our meeting room. So, I mean, what a great sweet spot just right through the top down of the football and man that was great that was a great play and it got us three points at the end of the half Charlie, do you guys have a name for that sort of punch peanut punch or what do you call it we call it the punch yep <laughs> so for that's it <laughs> but but no but it's a good question so if if we're a frontal on a you know, on a ball carrier and we go like that it's a punch um, if we force it out with our shoulder because it's a higher speed tackle, we call it a shoulder tackle. If we're coming from behind and we go top down, we call it a hammer. If we're from behind and we go bottom up, we call it a Tyson. Um, if we get them all wrangled up, we pull it out, we call it a race. We have different names for all our different takeaways. And that was the punch. That was a clinic punch right there. What was the last one that you said you pulled out? What do you call it? Called a rake. These are your names, or is it pretty common for actor around the league? These are cowboy terms that we've coined and come up with. So you can kind of categorize, you know, how the balls are coming out. There's a lot of different ways, but we don't want to have 20 different ways. We want to have just five. And they'll pretty much fit in about five categories. Who's the best you've ever seen do that? Um, Charles Tillman. And then current day is Darius Leonard. Darius Leonard's got a ton of them. Josh Norman, maybe put in that category. The punch takeaway. Peanut, uh, definitely Darius Leonard. Um, Josh Norman, Levante David, it's a great, you know, punch, hammer, takeaway guy. What about the current team? On the oh. What does this do? I mean, on uh, Cowboys. For the Cowboys? Yeah, like yeah, DeMarcus has got a couple of them out. Um, Donovan Wilson has a real good knack for going for the football. Um, Keanu Neal in his past has a, a lot of forced fumbles. And, you know, some of the guys, Anthony Brown's getting better at it. Jordan Lewis is getting better at it. Um, and we've put up in the meeting room, you know, their, their total tallies for their careers. And so it's a little bit of a competition, too, to see who can get the most. Because you don't have to recover it to get a statistic for a forced fumble. So we're going for forced fumbles. And, and running to the football is how you recover it. How, if at all, are you a different coach in the virtual environment today than you were at the start of the pandemic last year? Um, 
I've gone into the team meeting room and I've used the uh, Telestrator. So last year I didn't really use Telestration and we have a great team meeting room that allows us on a, on a big screen so I could be watching film and the guys are watching what I'm looking at and I can pause and I can draw on it almost like they probably do on the TV broadcasts. So we have the ability to do that. So I think that um, brings it to life a little bit more when you can pause, circle, pause, arrow, um, you know, draw happy faces or whatever. <laughs> I mean, all kinds of different tools. So um, I'm still learning a lot on the virtual world how to bring it to life and make it more interactive. It's never going to replace being in the same room. But um, I think there's ways I can make it better for sure because we're probably going to be in this for a, a while, years, every once in a while. I don't know. John, you mentioned uh, Kelvin Joseph a couple of times, and uh, he made a couple of plays yesterday. How would you measure his progress on special teams throughout the season? Yeah, that's a great one. Immeasurable, his progress. Especially, you know, he got hurt earlier in the season, missed a whole bunch of really valuable weeks. And when we got him back, he was, I mean, raw and as fresh as can be because he missed a lot of time. Um, I'm really proud of him for showing up every game and every, every day at work. Really, um, he's kind of a quiet kid, and you, you, game day you kind of look at him, you say, you know, I hope he's here today. And every day he's here, you know. So I, I've always learned don't judge a book by its cover, whether a guy's hyped, whether a guy's just focused, whether he's quiet. He's showing up every day, and he made a tackle on kickoff, made a great play, you know, engaging a blocker and then separating and making a tackle. You know, for, for a cornerback, those are tremendous skills to, to get. And I think it's only going to help him when he gets to be playing more defense, whenever that's going to be. Just the, the combat, the high speeds, the big spaces, the close quarters. I just think special teams, I'm biased, but I think playing early on special teams for a young professional football player pays huge dividends for them once they um, get demoted to becoming an offensive or defensive starter. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I was telling him. Dak mentioned that Demarcus Lawrence had bet him whether the defense would get more turnovers than the offense would touchdowns that the guys were talking about. Is that something you hear the guys talking about, and what's the energy like if so? Yeah, I hadn't heard that until I heard Dak say that. So it must be a, must be a wager that was on the down low, but now it's out. So I don't know what the wager is, but, but I like it. The in-house competition, and it might be probably just push-ups or something they got on the line. Yeah. <laughs> Sean Wright has played a lot of special teams. He's been, he's been down of late. Um, can you kind of why, how do you see his season thus far in any context you can provide us to why it hasn't made much sense for him to be up? I'm missing that week with the COVID. Um, heard obviously he couldn't play one week because of COVID. And then the next week, he wasn't back to like Friday. So he hadn't had a week of practice. So we didn't want to play him after just being back for one day. So that was two games. And then this past week, really, I think it came down to needing the extra back because of Tony's, you know, whatever. So the extra, the extra spot, you know, went Quan Hardy up and Nation down. I think that's as about as simple as it was. All right. yep. Thanks, Coach. Okay. Thanks, you guys. So you said you got Quan.